As part of the Galactic Empire's new order, the Imperial Security Bureau was created to inform the Emperor with a desired oversight of political events. The ISB setup within the Compnor structure was purely intentional to rival the very similar activities of Imperial intelligence operatives. This video is a continued focus on Compnor's structure from Legends material, with an understanding of how all the sub-branches of the ISB functioned and who were responsible. In 19 BBY, with the reorganisation of the Old Republic into the Galactic Empire, the ISB were originally formed by a crew of Andron, and its headquarters was set up inside the Imperial City. Swiftly, the ISB became a powerful and the most feared department of Palpatine's government, due to its surveillance and interrogation techniques. Their department policed the Empire to ensure the Empress' plans for the galaxy would not suffer the same fate as the Old Republic. Although the leadership of Imperial Intelligence, the Ibicure operated with similar techniques using largely more experienced operatives. However, the ISB possessed a much larger presence across the galaxy. They were effective in ensuring loyalty to the Empire's personnel by planting their operatives into many parts of the regime including the military, government branches and scientific organisations. Whereas Imperial Intelligence operatives adopted a stealth approach to surveillance, members of the ISB would largely identify themselves in order to intimidate the ranks. ISB agents could also be brutal and unrelenting. They were often extremely dedicated to the Empire's efforts and possessed a strong hunger for authority and power. Prominent members of the ISB were firstly Wolf Yularen, who was a former veteran of the Clone Wars and a close friend of Palpatine during the days of the Republic. Yularen was tasked with rooting out any corruption within the Empire, which was something that had plagued him during the Republic, but Yularen was dedicated to solving. Unfortunately for the Empire, Yularen died when he was killed in the destruction of the first Death Star at the Battle of Yavin. Another important leader of the ISB was the cunning Central Commander Selane, who was a senior officer in the ISB during the time of the Galactic Civil War. His thirst for power drove him to attempt to upstage Lord Vader to the Emperor by uncovering a rebel spy within the ranks of Vader's crew. However, his plan failed when the rebel spy escaped. There were six sub-branches of the ISB, all performing to support the department's directives which included surveillance, investigations, internal affairs, interrogation, re-education and enforcement. Operating from the central office on Coruscant, the Commission of Operations coordinated all of the ISB's branch assignments including resources for each separate sector within the galaxy. These directives were provided to the assigned sector officer to each ISB branch, and they were expected to follow the directives to the letter. So let's begin with the surveillance branch. It held around a third of the ISB's total personnel and was the largest branch and was responsible for two main purposes. The branch's main purpose was to identify any beings or activities which may be aiding the rebellion or could be opposing the Empire's plans. When surveillance had gathered enough intelligence based upon their suspicions, they handed the case to investigations. A second purpose was to use intimidation as a means of scaring and discouraging citizens from helping the rebellion through the fear of the Empire. Unlike the Imperial Intelligence, who possessed well-trained agents in this field, the ISB quality of personnel greatly differed from eager recruits from the sub-adult group to well-trained observation officers from Comp Force but also to veteran officials from the Coalition for Progress including Sector Monitor or Improvements Sector Development. This branch also relied on local contacts with an interest in subverting other local powers. Within the branch of investigations, all investigation agents possessed a pre-approved authority from the Select Committee and the appropriate MOF or Grand MOF to command any Imperial military assets in order to counter threats from the rebellion regardless of the environment. However, when agents were deployed to a rural planet, it was seen as unrealistic to convince locals of a cover identity, so these agents opted to use the ISB's reputation to gain their cooperation. Their expertise meant that they were very successful in hunting down targeted rebels and eliminating them. The branch of internal affairs was created to police the interior of the New Order, for any suspected disloyalty or behaviour seen to be a threat to the New Order. Although it was ambiguous, even members of Compnor's Select Committee would be watched and investigated if required. 
This type of agent often operated alone to root out criminal acts committed and uncover criminality on a larger scale, but sometimes would instruct protocol officers to make an example of an identified traitor. Inside the branch of interrogation, for those caught by agents of the investigations branch who were suspected of deliberately withholding information, it was unknown how subjects held in their custody were questioned and the truth was never discovered. Once interrogation agents had completed their work, any information uncovered was messaged back to investigations. The branch of re-education received any convicted members of Cobb Noor, and once subjects had completed their re-education, they were mostly posted to return into active service, but only of lower importance. However, the graduates of re-education, as they were known, would mostly appear to act indifferently from their fellow members. Characteristics observed appeared to be disjointed speech and acting with emotion which did not match the situation. Many felt that the graduates of re-education had been mentally altered with some unexplained method. Acting as the branch specialising in missions that will often provide military assistance to the investigations branch, the branch of enforcement, unlike other branches in the ISB, recruited its personnel from outside of the Bureau and they were not members of Compnor. This policy drew special attention from internal affairs, who viewed their recruited agents as a dangerous risk to their delicate nature of many of their missions. Generally, enforcement were called upon when the select committee requested a mission to be performed and would rather it not be done by Compnor members. The next video episode will review the Emperor's advisors and their role within the Empire. But in the meantime, please subscribe to my channel for more Imperial Explained videos. Thank you for watching, long live the Empire, and as always, may the Force be with you.